Well, Jill Snell, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I am so excited to have you here because we're going to talk again about being an author and what you need to do when you're an author in order to sell your book. So before we get started, why don't I hand over to you so you can introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure, Hen. First of all, thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, my name is Jyotsna Ramachandran. I am the founder and CEO of Happy Self Publishing. Uh, we are on a mission, um, you know, to impact the world one book at a time and raise the overall consciousness of the world through the books we publish by helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs who are too busy to finish their manuscript. So we just want to help them in the easiest possible way to publish a best-selling book by packaging their expertise into a book. So that's what we do at Happy Self Publishing. I know, and I love that because, you know, as, as my audience know, I'm on my journey now to write a book as well. But, oh, my gosh, there's so much to think about. And I think that is what's stopping so many people from actually getting their book out there. However, right. I want to learn a little bit more about your story. How did you get started? How did you become a best-selling author? How did you start up this business? Well, I think the biggest uh, turning point in my life was when I became a mom. I had actually only a couple of years before I became a mother, I had started my first business, which was into staff recruitment. And it was really running well. And I thought that this is going to be a million dollar company. I'm super excited about growing this company. And then I had the baby, right? And then everything started to change around me. My priorities started to shift. And I started feeling very guilty about running that business, which really needed a lot of my time. I had to keep going out and attend these meetings, which was not suiting my new role as a mom. So I had this worry if I sh should just stop doing whatever I'm doing and just be a good full-time mom, or if I can just balance both the roles. And I was thinking, maybe I can do a good job if I can run an online business so that I have more flexibility. Mm -hmm. So I started just finding different ways to make money online. I was just Googling different options. And I kept coming across this opportunity where I saw a lot of people, especially in countries like the US and Canada, um, and even in the UK, where they were finding these great topics and putting together short eBooks written by ghostwriters. And they would just keep marketing these books and make money as royalties. And I felt that this is something I would like to try. So I did a bunch of online courses on how do you get started with Kindle publishing. This was about seven years ago. So back then, this was like a gold mine. There was very little competition on Amazon. And whatever topic you put out would sell. So in six months, I had about 50 titles. And that made me more money than my recruitment agency. So I shut that down and I started focusing on this. And it also gave me the courage to write my first book. Mm. Up till then, whatever was published was written by other writers. But I thought that my journey is also worth sharing because a lot of Moms had started asking me how I managed to quit my job and do something from home while being a stay-at-home mom. So I wanted to just share my journey of leaving my job. So I wrote my first book called Job Escape Plan. And that completely changed everything for me, Hen, because for the first time, my voice was getting heard. And that was so full, much more fulfilling than the royalties I was earning from Amazon, because those books were written by somebody else. I didn't even know what they were about. Um, but this was my own story, right? So when people wrote to me saying my book inspired them to start their side hustle or all those kind of amazing things. It really made me feel good. And the book went on to become a bestseller. It was listed in Inc.com as one of the top 10 business books of 2015. And after all that recognition, people started asking me how I can help them to publish their books. And this felt great because I knew how it felt to become an author, right? And I wanted to pass on that feeling to others. And luckily, because of those ghostwritten books, I had a team of writers. I had a team of cover designers, editors, and formatters. So I thought, why not just use this great team? But instead of helping me publish more and more books, let me just serve other authors who had this real story or you know, message or knowledge to share with the world. So that's how Happy Self Publishing was born. It's been six years now. We've helped more than 500 authors from 35 countries. And it's been a very fulfilling journey so far. Oh, I love your story. And it's so motivating listening to it. And, you know, I think one of the things that I that I definitely take away from, from your story is 
You know, you start one thing and you think, this is it. This is going to be the one thing that I'm actually going to enjoy. enjoy. And then life throws you a curveball and then you just completely <laughs> pivot it into something else. But you ended up just going on this journey and just saying, hey, let me see where it takes me. But you still kept going. And I think, you know, for a lot of people listening to your story, they can hear that it wasn't just one direct line, but let's face mm. it, that's life. Life is not just a direct line. There's so many opportunities, so many different things that's going to happen. So for those of you listening to this or watching this video, um, you know, definitely take from Jotsna's story because anything can happen in life. It's just how you keep moving and taking on opportunities and thinking bigger and just falling in love with what it is that you want to do and accomplish at the end of the day. And I think, you know, this is where um, Jotsna becomes so successful because not even did she just establish a great business, but equally, she's a best-selling author, <laughs> which a lot of people aspire to be. So this is where I get really excited because I want to talk to you about this. I think, you know, everybody thinks about becoming an author, you need to write a book and, and then mm. that's it. And, you know, then you go to market it. But I think that word market is what really falls flat on its face because a lot of people don't know how to market their book effect effectively. So mm. you mentioned something that you want to share with the audience today. And that is that everybody who's an author who, um, you know, gets a book together, they need to build a funnel. They need to build yeah. an author funnel, as you call it. Talk to us a little bit about that and why that is so important from your point of view. Sure, Hen. So this is especially important for authors who are also entrepreneurs, because people write books for various reasons, to make their grandma proud or, you know, to uh, just get that next FedEx opportunity. Uh, so people write books for various reasons, but most entrepreneurs write a book so that they can use the book to position themselves as the go-to experts in their industry so that they can attract better quality clients, they can raise their pricing, and they can ultimately grow their business. So if that is going to be the purpose for writing the book, then having an author funnel is essential. Otherwise, the book may be a bestseller, it may be selling well, but it may not really serve the business because the book is different and the business is different and there is no bridge between that can, you know, tie the two together. Yeah. So that's why an author funnel is really important. So when I work with my clients, I show them how to build an author funnel in four steps. So basically, you just imagine a funnel, basically a, a V-shaped thing. Right on top of it is the book. So that's the first step in the funnel. People are going to discover the author, most probably through the book. Uh, even if they've never heard of that person, if they're looking for a, a solution to a problem on Amazon and your book shows up, and if they read the book, that's how they're going to be introduced to your universe. But then most authors make the mistake of, not doing anything else about it because it's not the reader's fault, right? Readers would love the book, but they, they are also busy and they may forget about connecting with the author after reading the book. So the author must have a reader magnet inside the book so that you can capture the names and the emails, email IDs of the people reading your book. Because even if you sell a million books on Amazon, they're not going to give away the database of the people buying your book. It's the author's responsibility to capture the leads and do that by giving away an amazing uh, free bonus inside the book. It could be an assessment. It could be a downloadable, like a worksheet or a PDF. It could be the audio version of your book. It could be anything of that's of value, but just give something away for free and have it planted in multiple places inside the book so that your readers don't miss that free bonus. They give their contact information and they sign up. So that's how the book needs to be prepared to be right on top of the funnel. And then comes the second level in the funnel, which is called the free value level, because once people sign up to your email list, you need to keep nurturing them by giving something of, uh, that's uh, free but valuable. It could be episodes of your podcast. It could be your YouTube videos. It could be your blogs. But have a way to continue the conversation outside the book by sending them all this good stuff. And then some people from that free value level who are really action oriented, don't want just this inspiration and motivation. They just want to take some action to get results. These are the people who will be willing to pay a little more for something that's a little more structured, like an online course or a membership community. That's the third level in your author funnel called the paid value level. So don't price the, that level at $1,000. Something that's less than $500 would be ideal for that level. It's just a way to make people open their wallet and pay you, right? And then once you win the trust, uh, let's say 100 people buy your book, maybe 30 or 40 people uh, 
give their email and join your funnel and they get the free bonuses from you. But out of those 30 or 40 people, 10 people may sign up for your online course. But there would be that one person who is like this busy entrepreneur who can't watch an online course and implement, but they want that one-on-one -on -one access to the author. So that that could be your coaching program. It could be your done for you service, but it's something that's at a premium level. So that's the fourth stage in the author funnel, which is the premium value level, which you need to have so that even if you sell a hundred books, that one person who climbs up the ladder, who goes through the funnel and becomes your high paying client will actually pay for the entire book publishing process. And if you have this set up, then you don't have to worry about how many books you sell in the front end, because yeah, that's also money, but that's just a small fraction of what you can potentially earn in the back end if you actually have this funnel set up well. Oh my gosh, it's so interesting because as you were talking there, I'm looking at it and thinking, yeah, it's something that I didn't know about. And yes, I am in the process or let's be very honest, I'm in the beginning process of getting my book together, okay? I'm still in the planning process. But that is something I never thought about. I knew that there was something in the back end as to, number one, what the goal is for the book. Like you said, is in order to establish that, that expert as who you are in your field, in your niche. Right. But what is that journey? What is that journey? You don't just want people to read the book. There should be a next step and a next step. Yeah. And I've made some notes here because I just found it so interesting. I was like, oh my gosh, of course. Uh -huh. you know. <laughs> and here I am, a business coach, and I help people with strategies, but I didn't even think about what you said. So I find it very interesting. And I think for everybody listening to this, you know, um, you would think, oh my gosh, it's just another thing that I need to do now. But hey, here's the point. If you build a funnel, you do it once. And then it just keeps on working over and over and over again for the long term. And it will grow. It will continuously grow. And I think this is what is so important is to understand, yes, you're going to put the hard work in in the beginning, not just writing the book, but building a funnel is really important because in the long term, it's definitely going to pay the dividends. And it's exactly, Jotna, what you said there is so true because along the line, people are going to buy the book. But if you mm. get that one client who's going to sign up one-on-one -on -one with you for your you know, most expensive package or service or done for you service, um, that basically pays for the publishing itself. So, so true. You, you know, I, I love the way you say it and I love the way you look at it because the return on the investment is by far the best thing you can do, but you're gonna have the funnel in place in order to help them on that journey. And it's also a different way of looking at it because it's not just about writing a book and publishing it. it there's a little bit of work and you've got to be more strategic about it, which is what I love what you just said now and the best thing hen uh, i'm sorry to interrupt i was oh, just okay. uh, uh, saying that a lot of times when i tell this to authors they get a little scared or rather overwhelmed because they feel that oh my god i thought writing a book is going to be difficult but you're asking me to put all these other steps in place but the good news is you don't have to do everything at once i'm not saying that as soon as you launch the book you need to have a perfectly working funnel you probably have a few steps already. You may already have your podcast or you may already have your coaching program. You just need to tie these things together. And if you don't have any of these things in your funnel, start building one thing at a time. Like I had a client who was a fitness enthusiast. He was actually in an IT job. When he wrote his book, he didn't have a business. He was working full time. But two years later, when I interviewed him, he had all the steps in the author funnel in place because he launched one thing after the other. And now he was in a comfortable position to quit his job and focus on his fitness business because he had the funnel. Yeah, no, I love how you put it in perspective. You know, it makes so much more sense. And thank you so much for sharing that because like I said, I just had a light bulb moment myself as you were talking through these things. And that's why I enjoy having this conversation with you because I learned so much from you as well. And, I, and I, that's why I'm so excited to share this with the audience because I'm sure everybody else is getting some light bulb moments as well. Now, I think the other thing that I want to share with uh, or ask you really and share with the audience is people always say, oh my gosh, I've just been you know, an Amazon bestseller and everybody's so happy about having that little star next to their name. <laughs> um, but how do you become an Amazon bestseller? And, and let's face it, you know, a lot of people are out there thinking about self-publishing. But from your perspective, what can you tell people about becoming an Amazon bestseller? Sure. A lot of times authors feel that reaching the bestseller charts is not easy for a first time author because you don't probably you don't have a huge audience people are not waiting in the queue to buy your book so how does one become a bestseller people have this 
wrong uh, notion that they need to sell thousands of copies to become a best selling author. That could be true if you're aiming for a Wall Street Journal list or New York Times or something like that. But for Amazon bestseller charts, that's not the case. Let me first explain the algorithm behind how Amazon prepares this list. So every one hour, this list is updated. That's a good thing. Unlike other charts which are prepared on a weekly basis, Amazon list is updated every one hour. And it's not just for the entire Amazon store. Otherwise, you'll probably have to write a Harry Potter to reach the number one position. But this uh, list is available for every single category and subcategory inside Amazon. So technically, if you actually reach a small little subcategory, and even if you're one among the 100 top books, you can call yourself a best-selling author. But if you put in a little bit of more effort, then you can actually reach the number one position in a bigger category because that will increase your visibility and credibility. What we teach our clients to do is first make a list of all the relevant categories for your book. And it's important to be relevant because if your book is about productivity and you place your book in some candle making category, you may still hit the bestseller charts, but then you won't feel good in, from the inside because that's not relevant to your topic. So make a list of all the relevant categories and then find the ones that are not very competitive. Like if Tony Robbins has his book in the number one position in say money management category, then you probably don't want to be in the same category because it's going to be very difficult to outbeat that book. So mm -hmm. have a couple of popular categories, but also have a couple of not so competitive categories. So once you have these categories in place, make sure you have everything else looking good, like your cover, your, you have at least 10 or 20 good reviews for the book. You have a nice book's description. So let the book look nice uh, because when you're going to send traffic, it needs to get converted, right? So make sure you have all the conversion elements in place and then it's time to send the traffic to the book because our goal is to make sure that the book sells the maximum number of copies that it can within a short span of time. Mm -hmm. So the key is this, instead of selling, uh, let's say 500 books, in a month's time, it's okay even if you sell 400 books, but if you can do the maximum sale within a week's time, the speed at which the book sells will help you reach the bestseller charts. So the total number of books doesn't matter, but the speed at which it sells and the category that it is placed in, that's what is going to help the book reach the number one position. So now when it comes to sending traffic to the book, you need to make use of both your audience and other people's audience because only your audience may not be enough. So definitely start preparing your launch team members. Let all the people on social media know about your book launch. Let your email list know about the upcoming launch. So that's your audience, but also uh, tap into other people's audience. One way is to go on other people's podcasts and talking to their audience. Or if you've interviewed, let, let's say you've, you've interviewed 10 people in your book, they will be happy to share the book with their audience as like a token of thanks. And also make use of promotional websites. We predominantly depend on promotional websites because a lot of times our clients have zero audience and zero network. So they just want to uh, do whatever we can to support the launch. So these promotional websites basically have a long email list of uh, regular buyers of uh, books on Amazon. So they would send uh, notifications to their audience saying, hey, today this book, which is newly launched is offering uh, the book at a discounted price. So we will price discount the ebook alone and we will promote it to dozens of websites. So during the, that one week period, when the book is at a discount, the author should make use of their audience and other people's audience to send all, all this traffic to Amazon. And if your category is right, the cover looks great and you have great reviews and all of that is working in your favor, then there is no reason why you should not hit the best seller charts. Oh my gosh, I find it so interesting what you're saying. Um, I've got a quick question for you because as you were talking, so the, the book that you're selling, um, let's say for an example, you've got a hard copy, soft copy, audio, and you've got a Kindle version. Mm -hmm. Does it matter what kind of format you're selling the book in or does it all apply? So say for instance, I'm selling more of the audio version than I'm selling of the soft cover version. Does that still help with the sales? Is it solely just on the sales? It doesn't concentrate on the format of the book. Is that right? Yeah, so this is such a great question, Hen. Uh, inside Amazon, there are multiple uh, bestseller charts. So there is one for books, which includes all the four formats mm -hmm. that you mentioned, and there's one for the Kindle store. So the strategy I mentioned 
works perfectly for the Kindle store because the Kindle version is the version that you can price at the cheapest. You can yes. just put it up for 99 cents. So that way it's easier for people to just go ahead and buy the book. But the good thing is the book should, when the book is available in multiple formats, first of all, it gives that premium feel to the book. It makes it look more professional when you have it in multiple formats. And some people who, who buy your ebook will also end up buying your paperback, or they may also go ahead and buy the audiobook. So there will be that spillover effect when you promote your ebook. But when you're planning your bestseller launch, focus on the ebook because when you just focus on that one format, it's going to give you far higher results than trying to sell the other formats during the launch. But once you, your launch period is over and the book is available in multiple formats, then you can obviously focus on the other things also. Yeah, no, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and, and I'm so glad you mentioned this because you're right. I'm, I mean, I had the same idea as to, you know, selling more books will give you the Amazon bestseller list, but there's a little bit more work to it. And it depends on the category, which I didn't know about. So I'm so glad that you shared that. And also, you know, about the formats. And I'm sure everybody listening to this is making crazy notes, just like I am. I've just been making crazy <laughs> notes, arrows and little stars and exclamation marks. Anyway, this is great. I love, love this. So for those of you out there who are busy writing a book, thinking about writing a book, and you also want to have an Amazon bestseller, well, here's some great tips. I mean, honestly, I think what Jotsna is saying is so, so valuable. And it just shows you that it is possible for you as well. Um, but I think this is obviously a little bit where your pre-marketing sequence comes in play and that funnel, of course. The pre-marketing is telling everybody beforehand that you're writing a yeah. book and um, getting them curious. So when your book launches, you have that influx of traffic coming then, coming to buy your book. So people are almost like waiting for the doors to open so they can go and buy your book. So be very, very aware of that as well. The pre-marketing sequence is very important when it comes to publishing your book. So here's another thing that I wanted to ask you about. Um, this is something also which I think the audience would really want to know because everybody's talking about self-publishing these days. And, you know, you don't yeah. need to work uh, or most people don't feel that they want to work with somebody because let's face it, most people won't have the funds to work with a, a publisher, et cetera. But those who are thinking about self-publishing in particular, are there any tips as to what you can share with them about what mistakes they should avoid? Because I think this is the big thing. We all feel like, oh my gosh, I can self-publish, but what if I make all of these mistakes? Or what if I do this wrong? Yeah. Or what if I do that wrong? So from your experience, what mistakes um, have people made in the past that the listeners can avoid? Yeah, this is such a good question, Hen. So when somebody decides to self-publish, it's a great thing because it has all these advantages. But the only problem is you don't have the expertise or the backing of a publishing house who've published thousands of books, right? So they kind of know what works and what doesn't work. And you cannot tap into their knowledge bank when you are going to do it yourself. So there are a few things that one must be careful about. Firstly is the selection of the topic itself, right? The, and the way you position the book. A lot of times self-published authors make the book all about themselves because obviously the first reason why you want to write your book is because you know that you've gone through a journey, you have some kind of an experience and you're eager to share that with the world. So a lot of authors make this mistake of writing a memoir or an autobiography about their life journey. And to be honest, unless you are a celebrity who comes on television or you're a, an Instagram influencer, nobody really cares about your life story. Though it may be really valuable, it may not attract your reader's attention. So you need to just uh, flip it and position it uh, keeping in mind what the reader needs. So you might probably have gone through a cancer journey and you would have been a survivor, uh, a warrior, but then uh, don't just talk about your life, but make it about the reader, like, you know, the four pillars to take care of your uh, health or something like that, like to overcome a particular challenge. So that way they know that this book is going to help them. And inside the book, obviously share about your story, make it about uh, the beautiful life experiences, but just don't make it only about that. Position it for the reader. So that's one thing that I see as a mistake that a lot of self-published authors do. Uh, the second thing that I want to share is uh, during the publishing process. When you self-publish, it doesn't mean you need to do everything yourself, right? You may not want to wait for a publisher to approve your manuscript. You don't want to wait for five years to have your book published. That's why you're self-publishing. 
part that doesn't mean you need to edit it yourself you need to use canva to do your cover design if you're not a designer you need to actually work with a, a team of professionals so that your book doesn't look self published it should look like a new york times bestseller even if it doesn't reach those charts right and for that there are a lot of um, professional freelancers or agencies like happy self publishing who have a team of people who've done this so many times there are people who've previously worked in publishing houses and are now working with publish self publishing agencies who can take care of all these important steps so as an author you preserve your energy on probably writing the book or uh, marketing the book and things like that and not worry about everything else in the publishing process yeah uh, and another important mistake that a lot of authors make is they focus a lot of their uh, time in marketing the book during the launch but after the book is launched they move to the next project they want to launch a webinar they want to launch a course and they forget that they've written a book the good thing about a book is it's an evergreen marketing tool once you're an author you will always be looked upon as an author if you keep talking about it so have an evergreen marketing strategy using the book whether it's going on podcasts regularly or running amazon ads keep doing something to promote the book because otherwise the you're not going to get uh, people on top of your funnel so that they finally end up you know buying all the premium things that you have to offer right so don't stop marketing the book with the launch do it for a longer duration of time yeah no oh gosh those are great great tips you know and i think in particular for those who who wants to self publish um there's nothing wrong with self publishing but you're only as good as what you know <laughs> yeah. so um my suggestion is just at least for those of you listening and wanting to go into self publishing like i said nothing wrong with that but go and talk to a publisher and talk to go and talk to jotsna and and just have a conversation with her and see you know what it is that she can offer you and um, because of her experience because of the team that she's got and you might actually resonate with some of them and go actually you know what i don't want all of this hassle i've got stress enough as it is just trying to write my book i don't want to have the stress of going into publishing and making sure that it hits all the charts etc cetera, etc cetera. and so in that kind of sense it might just be worth it to do that investment to work mm -hmm. with a publisher um and i think the process just becomes a bit more enjoyable because at the end of the day then you're going to get things done quicker instead of sitting on this book for 5 years maybe more mm -hmm. and not getting it out there um so yeah now honestly just now this was absolutely amazing i've made so many notes I actually had to turn my paper around because i ran out of space <laughs> honestly it was so amazing just to hear you talk about this and sharing your expertise here with us so thank you so so much however before we conclude the episode you've got an amazing boot camp and i think for those people listening now their ears are pricking up and going oh what is this about Talk to us a little bit about your bootcamp and what they can expect there, and then we'll give the details to the audience of where they can sign up for it. Sure, hands. So a few months ago, I realized that we only work with authors who have their manuscript ready or who are who have already started that process, and we help them with the next steps. But there are so many people out there who have that amazing book inside of them, but they just don't have the confidence and the clarity to get started. So I thought that the initial few steps. like choosing your book's topic becoming absolutely clear about your purpose designing your author funnel before you write the book getting clear about who your reader is those are some critical steps before you actually start writing the book so the bootcamp has been designed to give you clarity on those aspects so i do this live inside my facebook group every few months but for those of you who don't want to wait till the next bootcamp i have the replay of the previous one so you can go and check it out at happyselfpublishing.com forward slash bootcamp and that will give you the uh, instant access to the 5 day bootcamp that i just did last month and if you also want to be a part of our facebook group where you can interact with other authors ask me some questions directly then you can check out happy authors tribe in facebook so the quick link to that is happyselfpublishing.com forward slash tribe it will redirect you to our facebook group join that and let's continue this conversation about writing your book Oh my gosh, thank you so much for making that available. For those of you listening, if you didn't get that, don't worry, the links are below in my show notes so you can go there. You can go and obviously join the boot camp and if you want to join the Facebook group, 
Uh, that link will also be in the show notes. So go and click on it so you can go and join Jotsna there. Now, um, I'm also going to put Jotsna's Instagram details there. So if you want to check her out, stalk her a little bit, see what she's on about, <laughs> then by all means, go and follow her on Instagram because I'm sure you're going to learn a lot more from her there. And for those of you listening, just keep on going on this journey. You know, if you're thinking about writing a book, um, if it's been something that's been playing in your mind for a while, just start doing it. Honestly, start talking to people such as Jotsna. Uh, I just said your name wrong. Jotsna. I knew I was going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> just go and talk to people and just find out what it is that you need to start doing in order to get your book out there. Don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate because, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, you're going to go, gosh, I should have really done this. And then you're going to regret it so badly. So um, all the resources are there. There are amazing people out there to help you, just like Jotsna. Just go and follow her, see what it is that she has to offer. And I'm sure she would love to have a conversation with you if you want to um, you know, get in contact with her and have a chat. Jotsna, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I just love this conversation. Like I said, I made so many notes. If I feel like this, I can just imagine how the audience are feeling right <laughs> now. So uh, I really appreciate thank you. So you. Much, thank Anne. you so much for coming on. My pleasure, Hen. I really love meeting you today and having this great conversation. Amazing. Thank you so much. So for everybody listening, go down to the show notes, go and sign up for Jotsna Facebook group, and also go to um, her bootcamp and check that out as well. Thank you so much, Jotsna. We'll be in touch very soon.